So this is a quick um, revision video on the United Nations for GCSE citizenship students. So the United Nations can be defined as an international organisation formed in 1945 after World War II to increase political and economic cooperation amongst member countries to ensure that a future world war never happens. The organisation works on economic and social development programmes, improving human rights and reducing global conflicts. They are recognisable, um, the peacekeepers, by their blue berets with the white United Nations logo, as can be seen on the right here, which is a map of the world with a target on it with kind of olive branches wrapped around it. Um, three main aims at the top there is um, prevent conflict, war and promote peace, uh, to promote respect for the human rights, and there are 30 of them contained under the United U Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which was signed in 1948 by Eleanor Roosevelt. Um, and to enforce international laws. Now, leaders from all the countries get together and have big meetings at their headquarters in New York, the USA. Um, the United Nations does have a UN Charter, which is a little bit like a referee's rule book, which acts as um, international laws, and countries have to sign to say that they'll follow the rules. Um, as we know, many countries don't, however. Um, it had originally 45 members, but now it's up to 193 members, which is nearly every country in the world. Um, it has a Security Council, which has five permanent members. Those permanent members are um, the victorious powers during World War II. So they, the five permanent members are the UK, France, USA, China and Russia. Those members also have the power of veto, so they can say no to some action that the United Nations wants to take. The Security Council also has 10 non-permanent members as well. So the 10 non-permanent members, which change every few years, after their term is up, which is taken from countries all around the world, so a certain amount of countries are allowed from each of the um, continents that form those 10, plus the five permanent members equals 15 members of the United Nations Security Council. Now, um, the Security Council, as it says there, you can see the five members there and the 10 non-permanents that serve two years. There are around about 110,000 peacekeeping troops that are uh, stationed around the world in many missions. You have the Secretary General, you have the General Assembly, um, every country gets one vote, um, and there are many um, other bodies that make up the United Nations and organs and specialised agencies. Just to take your eye to the bottom here, WHO stands for the World Health Organisation, um, which is obviously doing a lot at the current times with the coronavirus crisis. You have you UNICEF, which deals with children. You've got the United Nations High Commission on Refugees, which is to do with refugees and asylum seekers as well. Um, and you've got the WTO, the World Trade Organization. You've got the International Court of Justice, which will um, take to trial war criminals and leaders of countries like dictators if they've done things wrong. Um, and that, actually, that, that's the International Criminal Court and the International Court of Justice. Uh, they deal with disputes from countries, particularly over land disputes as well. Um, quick history, United Nations formed in 1945. In 1948, it set up the Declaration on Human Rights and the first peacekeeper missions happened. The UN High Commission for Refugees won a Nobel Peace Prize in 1954. In 1960, the UN adopted the Declaration on the Rights of a Child and campaigned against apartheid and sent peacekeepers to Cyprus as well. Uh, unfortunately, in 1994, the UN failed to keep the Tutsis safe uh, in the Rwanda and a genocide happened between the Houthis and the Tutsis. Um, in 2003, the UN failed to intervene in the Darfur crisis in which the government has been uh, attacking villages. Um, in 2012, due to the power of veto, the UN has failed to intervene in the Syrian crisis and the genocide of its people. Um, there are some fundamental aims and principles um, that the UN does, so you could think about whether or not these would be um, biggest priorities or lowest priorities in the current uh, world. And there's a key word at the bottom there, which is international humanitarian law. People get confused in the exam, think it's to do with human rights, but it's actually laws that set rules for protecting people in war and conflict. So you want to be very specific on that. Um, then you've got some strengths and weaknesses of the strengths and weaknesses of the United Nations. Um, and you've got three powers that the UN Charter also has at the top there. First being diplomacy, so to talk about um, how they can resolve issues between countries. You could then impose economic sanctions um, in the form of trade being stopped with countries. And then finally, there might be military action in the form of peacekeeping troops.
So if you take a look at those strengths and weaknesses there, you've got um, eight. See if you can figure out which ones are strengths of the UN and which ones might be weaknesses. Pause the video if you need to. And now I'll go through the answers. So um, the first one here is great influence and power. That is a strength. The UN is the world's leading moral authority on the promotion of and um, protection of human rights. That is a strength. Failed to intervene and prevent the genocide in Rwanda and Sudan. That is a weakness. The United Nations has won many Nobel Peace Prizes. That would be a strength. The Rohingya Muslims in Myanmar are being killed en masse and the UN has failed to intervene. This is a more recent example of the UN's work. Um, that would be a weakness. The UN's power of veto means it can be slow to act is another weakness. The UN has no army but relies on its members to volunteer soldiers to join its peacekeeping missions. You could view that as a strength or a weakness. Um, most people would view that as a weakness because it doesn't have the ability to raise its own army and relies on countries to contribute forces to form just peacekeepers. Um, it has, however, prevented a future world war so far, so that would be a major strength of the United Nations. Um, some kind of exam questions that you might get, so 15 markers if you're doing the Ed Excel, or it could be a 12 marker on the OCA, OCR board. Uh, the United Nations has failed its fundamental mission to bring peace and stability to the world. So you'd have to think about the um, arguments to support and the arguments to go against this and obviously finish your essay question stating your own opinion and if there are any sources to refer to always refer to the sources throughout the essay as well. There is no point in the UK belonging to international organisations, it can look after itself. This would be a very topical question um, especially in light of the recent um, exit from the European Union and the referendum that the UK has held and obviously you could talk about the United Nations in that you could also talk about the Commonwealth, you could talk about the EU, you could even talk about um, NATO as well, the North Atlantic Treaty Organisation that they joined in 1949. Um, a few other bits of key information about the United Nations here as well, and as it says there, um, around 110,000 peacekeepers in 14 operations, 